take heat when this wisdom being dropped MC spilled their skills but they'll just get mocked Early bird on the track for up to bat Throw a steak on the grill so I can chill and get fat Heat up the coals while I heat up the mic Competition, if they're matched then I'll strike Wreck the shop, leave the shit in a shamble Put your money on a short shot, binge ain't a gamble I slap a muscle on a sucker whose tongue skips Give him the boot and turn his ass into dumb chips With what's left I fertilize the earth You was bunk as an MC but it shit should bring birth I walk up after to be Welcome back to Kutaki no Ha the podcast dedicated to the Bujinkan martial arts of Masaki Hatsumi Soke and to the spirit of cooperation and friendship in the Bujinkan community. I'm Sean, your host for the podcast. And welcome back after a long hiatus. I think we've taken about the longest break of any podcast on the internet. Uh, it's good to be back and doing some recording today. Finally have some time to put this thing together. So hopefully we'll get this episode out to you guys very shortly. This is episode 20, and as I mentioned I have before, on episode 19, I had wanted to make episode 20 a video episode, and uh, that has just taken a long time for me to, to put together because it's a bit more complicated. You've got these different elements, the, the video and audio that you have to you know put together using different software and things like that, so it's just taken me a lot of time. Um, like the rest of you, I have uh, work and training and relationships as well to balance and everything, so... Um, my apologies for the delay, but I have been busy with other things. However, as I said, it's good to be back. The scenes that we're watching here are from my Saturday morning training group. Uh, we train every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to noon. And if anyone is in Japan visiting, you're of course more than welcome to join us if you like. Uh, just contact me and let me know if you're interested and we can look at uh, making sure you get there. Um, so this is just some, some scenes from from training uh, the group and um, toward the end of the the second half of this podcast I'm going to be including some video clips from an interview that I did while I was doing a training seminar at Mats Elms Dojo in in Stockholm last year and uh, again as I mentioned this this episode is kind of uh, all focused about kind of like uh, basically me and my group and the interview is with me so it's kind of like a me 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 episode but um, basically I just wanted to try making a video episode and of course the only video that I really had uh, the ability to use royalty free was from my own stuff so uh, that's the reason for all of this self promotion on this episode um, we'll be getting back to the normal format next episode and we can continue talking to a uh, wide variety of other people that that live in Japan and that come over to Japan to visit for training. Speaking of royalties for video, I want to thank Matsi Elm uh, from Stockholm for letting me use video clips from the DVD that he made of the seminar over there. Uh, Mats takes care of all the video stuff uh, of the seminars and training that I've done over there. I don't get any money for it or, or do any of the editing or anything like that. So I want to thank him for permission to use the the video clips from there. Uh, I have edited them myself because of the of the length of the interview and just included some points that I thought were interesting and hopefully you guys will find them interesting as well. There are some kanji inserted into the video and the kanji for gyoku was mistakenly inserted instead of the kanji for king for those of you with sharp eyes so hopefully you can overlook that. But other than that here's the interview. We did Gyoko Ryu as well um, just a few years ago. <coughs> but uh, uh, at the time that we did Gyoko Ryu a few years ago, Sensei was doing a lot of um, talk about big space and uh, and big big kamai and drawing the drawing the opponent out in a, in a big kind of distance and uh, in, in kind of a circular way, as Gyoko Ryu ten movement tends to be circular in nature. Um, but I think this year the it's just that the circle has become so much smaller, and so the movements are more subtle and harder to see. The the the, the twisting and kind of the circle is just getting much smaller in nature. Uh, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed with the theme this year. Maybe not about the theme itself, but about the nature of of Ryuha in general. Um, 
I think a lot of people tend to view like a Yuha as, as just a, a, a list or connection of, of Waza, uh, maybe broken into s different sections. So Yokoryu is, uh, you know, these things. Um, whereas, uh, and, and so they tend to view the theme of the year in that kind of um, structured way. Um, my personal feeling and, and opinion is that it's uh, the Yuha itself is kind of a living thing and um, Hatsumi Sensei being the soke of the Yu is therefore in the position to cause that to evolve in any way that he sees fit at any given time so um, it's confusing to some people when Sensei will do something and call it Gyokoryu when, when it's not in the list of official Gyokoryu yeah. things. And so some people say, well, that's not Gyokoryu. It's, but but it, it is Gyokoryu because he, 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 he said it so. is, and, and he's, he's a living like, embodiment of the Ryuha itself. So I just, I think um, that there needs to be kind of, it's better to view the Ryuha as kind of um, a living, breathing thing which is constantly changing and evolving rather than like a, a set of, of, of techniques and a list or an organized structure. Um, to me, Tenchi Inyo, Tenchi of course is uh, Ten being high or heaven and Chi being low or, or earth and um, so there's an aspect of um, polar opposites there, and uh, and um, inyo of course is the same as like in the Chinese you say yin and yang. So again, it's referring to polar opposites which interconnect with each other. Um, wow, we could really go deep into this. Um, uh, basically. I think it. I think it refers to the interplay or interaction of opposites, like uh, plus and minus, combining to okay. to say be zero in in the middle. And um, you could also say that perhaps um, if you go into the concept of like ten chi jin, you've got you've got ten and chi and jin maybe being mad in, in the middle. And so perhaps there is an aspect where um, human nature or mankind is that has a nature uh, which can bring those polar opposites into balance or use the interplay of them to accomplish something um, creative as the result of like human will or, or human um, spirit or creativity. The, uh, along the same lines with the Tenchi Jin, adding adding the Jin into it, um, it's re uh, related to the it's related to Confucianism and and uh, the Kanji of obviously coming from China. Um, the the Kanji for King is made of three horizontal lines, Ten Chi Jin, and then the, the there's one horizontal line which connects them. So there's three lines and a line which connects the three vertically. So, in that kind of Confucianist um, or Confucian philosophy, the the king is the one who can unite heaven, earth, and mankind, and and unify and direct them. So I think it's the same thing for um, not only say the leader of a country or or this kind of thing, but also for everyone as a, as an independent kind of human being. Um, that the aspect of, of Tenchi Jin or, or Tenchi Inyo involves the balance of things in our own lives and the ability to bring the different um, aspects or elements in our own lives under the, under the control of, of human spirit and under the, under the allowing the different things in our lives to be balanced and therefore used by us for our own um, development and uh, creativity. Mm, could you like give a more like practical example of how we could use that in our 
you know, basic daily training, mm. and especially for us that haven't been around for so long mm. in Beijing camp. Okay. Well, uh, let's say, for example, you, you have, uh, you say, uh, qi could be matters of, uh, it's, it's earth, so it could be matters of, say, um, material relevance, like um, your job, your, your house, your car, and so those things have to be taken care of, mainly through financial means. Um, maybe 10 could refer to some kind of like mental or spiritual development, some kind of um, aspiration, for example, or a dream that, that a person might have. Um, and so, for example, to balance those <coughs> opposite kind of extremes um, is an important thing in life. Like, for example, in, in the case of an unbalanced person, you might find someone who's really um, going off on a big kind of spiritual or philosophical binge, and um, they completely forget about their, they leave their bills unpaid, their, their car gets repossessed by the bank because they're so into this, like, say, religious um, thinking or philosophical thinking, or they're, they're like, uh, they want to be a guru or, or something like this. Um, so they can completely lose balance in that way. Um, on the other hand, there, there are probably people in, in the opposite situation where they're just focused so much on material things that they have lost sight of what it means to actually be a human being and, and have like um, experience, uh, you know, love and uh, say the higher kind of creative aspirations of the human spirit. And um, just just living for the sake of uh, making money and this kind of thing. So maybe that person is completely wealthy but has nothing inside. So that can be off balance in the other way. Um, but say uh, the, a person who is who has that middle point, the balance between both, um, you can see them as maybe an example of a very successful person because they're able to balance. Um, those aspects of their lives, as well as their their personal relationships, and you know, um, and their training, for example. The kanji for for ku kan, for example, first of all, the, the ku refers to empty space, but kan refers to an, an interval between two things. So um, it refers to like a, a enclosure or a, a limited area which has which has borders which has boundaries so uh, my understanding of kukan is that it refers to to the empty space which is surrounded by something else okay um, uh, it can be surrounded by it can be the borders can be defined by by the limbs of people's bodies or by the lines of weapons or, or this kind of thing um, so when working with kukan I believe it's referring to working within the boundaries of, say, the, these lines, or um, by changing the shape or angles of, of the boundaries to change the shape of the space itself. However, it does have a shape, so it does have lines which define it w within which it is contained. You know what I mean? Koku... Yeah, um, uh, refers to a different kind of space which is more like um, the type of space you think of when you think of outer space. It's more like um, boundless or, or limitless space. So I think there are, there are two kinds of space that Hatsumi Sensei often talks about and um, often when it is translated the distinction between which kind of space he's referring to is not specified by the translator. It's just comes out in English as space, you know, move into space or this kind of thing, which is kind of a little bit vague. Um, but the Japanese, you know, is, is used by sensei in such a way that he, he can say a lot more with only one word. Yeah. Yeah. So, to me, those are the differences in those terms. I think it's to just keep going. Yeah. And to never, to to have the the heart of of never giving up. Um, 
sometimes learning can be a frustrating experience and, and uh, we all come across you know barriers that we have to to get through and and um, sometimes um, we can we can go to a class where you just walk away and think man that was a complete waste of time or uh, I man I, I was terrible or I didn't learn anything you know like what happened I've been training this long and I should be better than this by now and why am I having why am I experiencing this kind of you know the uh, blockage or like a or plateau even where you yeah. don't seem to be learning anything and uh, I think that pressing through those kind of um, times in training is one example of the attitude of, of, of keeping going. You know, of course, as well as if you're in a, if you're in an actual fight or situation where you you feel that um, the other person or or persons are are stronger than you or may may beat you, but you have to be able to draw on the the inner kind of will. To survive and keep going, no matter no matter what happens, kind of thing. Yeah. no matter if you get hit or no matter if you get cut or whatever, you have, you still have to somehow get through it. Yeah. And that wraps up the clips from the interview that we're going to use for this episode. Um, getting back to the Saturday morning training group stuff, we're looking at some Ukemi training. Uh, there's Liz hitting the mats, and um, just. These Akemi clips we're just going to look at as we kind of wrap up the, this episode. Um, once again, I want to apologize for all the time it took me to put this together. Um, hopefully it has been worth the wait. And we'll be getting back to more regular episodes, interviews with other people. And hopefully we can put out a couple of episodes a month. And uh, keep all you Kutaki no Ha podcast fans happy. Here's some closing music and we'll wrap up this episode. Catch you again in episode 21. Stealing down an alley on a cold, dark night. I see a halo in the rain round a street light. I stop and look and listen to the sound as the raindrops penetrate the silence all around. Alone, I gaze into the glistening street. The distant thunder echoing my heartbeat, urging me on to a secret goal. Away from the light from this lamp on a pole. So I turn, slip away into the rain. Like a shroud.